When I grow up, I want to work for a woke company. Like super woke. When I grow up, when I grow up, I want to be hired based on what I look like rather than my skills. I want to be judged by my political beliefs. I want to get promoted based on my chromosomes. When I grow up, I want to be offended by my coworkers and walk around the office on eggshells and have my words policed by HR. Words like grandfather, peanut gallery, long time no see, no can do. When I grow up, I want to be obsessed with emotional safety and do workplace sensitivity training all day long. When I grow up, I want to climb the corporate ladder. Just by following the crowd. I want to be a conformist. I want to weaponize my pronouns. What are pronouns? It's time to grow up and get back to work. Introducing the number one woke-free job board in America, redballoon.work. Hallelujah, everyone. Companies with values deeper than DEI do exist, and there is even a site to help you find them. Today, I am pleased to welcome Andrew Krapuschitz, the CEO of a new anti-woke job platform. I'm Julie Hartman, and this is Timeless. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to Timeless. I hope that you're having a great week. Just a reminder to hit the subscribe button down below so that you can stay notified every time I post a Julie Noted news video or a Timeless episode. And also be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Julie R. Hartman. Now this site, whose CEO we are talking to today, is a site that I have referred to so many of my friends. I was telling Mr. Krapuschitz before the show that one of my friends is applying to get her real estate license, and she recently failed an exam where she was touring an apartment for a prospective couple. Why? Because she said that the, that the apartment had a master bedroom, the apartment had his and her bathrooms, and the biggest sin of all was that she said that the apartment was just steps away from Central Park which is of course very offensive to people who cannot walk. The point is wokeism has infected all of our businesses, it seems, and thank God there seems to be a solution. Mr. Krabuschitz is the CEO of Red Balloon, which is a job posting site designed to connect non-woke applicants and actively hiring businesses. He began his career as a Silicon Valley entrepreneur and has had various jobs in business processing automation, software, and consulting. Hi, Mr. Krabuschitz, thank you so much for coming on to Timeless. Thanks for having me and nice to uh, nice to see you. So have I described Red Balloon accurately in the introduction, the place yeah, where non-woke applicants can go and non-woke businesses can hire? No, that's actually it. And, and we can either call it non-woke or just pro-freedom, uh, which is where I like to spend a lot of time focusing. So, and, and Red Balloon is less than two years old. I was the CEO of a pretty significant tech company that I'd helped found, but I'd sold a number of times. And the board decided that I was a little too conservative and Christian for their liking. And so I found myself delighted. It's going to happen to a lot of Americans. We're going to have to make a decision uh, to decide between their values or their job. And I just didn't think that was right. And so I started redballoon.work as really a place for people who are either caught up in the crosshairs of cancel culture or just in this um, crazy woke ideology that's fairly new to the workplace, but is really infecting the ability for us to be joyful and work hard. And so that's what redballoon.work is. Um, it's dot work because um, dot com sounded a little bit too much like communist to me, and we wanted to focus on work. So red balloon dot work. Uh, we have thousands of employers that are looking to hire people who want to focus on merit. They want to person not on skin color, not on pronouns, not on all the DEI stuff that comes along with that. And on the other side of the fence, um, you have lots and lots of job seekers. You had over a million who have been on the site looking for freedom, because if you can be free at work, there's a good chance you're going to be free in other areas of your life. And uh, we've got lots and lots of stories about both crazy on the woke side and not crazy once you actually are free at work. But it's been a really fun adventure for us. I love what you just said about allowing people to be joyful and work hard. I often say that, that people my age, I just graduated from college about a year ago, what incentive do we have to work hard if we know that merit is not going to be rewarded? There seems to be very, very little incentive for us, and it's, it's quite discouraging to, 
to go to college and work so hard and get good grades and you know work your tail off to find a good job and know that that may be for naught because of the skin color that you happen to be born. Absolutely. Uh, I was talking to a gentleman recently who said he went in for a job interview and the first question is, are you gay or Asian? And he's like, how does that have anything to do with this software development job I'm applying for? And he's like, no, none of the above. And they're like, OK, then I guess our interview is over. And when you are judged, you know, like Martin Luther King Jr. wanted, when you are judged based on your skin color rather than the quality of your character, or the quality of your work, that is demoralizing. It's demoralizing not just to people who are in a protected category or not in a protected category. Um, there was a recent uh, fairly uh, uh, viral TikTok video where um, a an African American woman was basically saying, "Look, you know you're the diversity hire," and when these things are true, because um, it is very insulting to everyone when you say, "Look, I don't care." how good you are at your job. I don't care how hard you work. I don't care how motivated you are. I care only about who your parents are and what your political beliefs are. Um, that is demoralizing to everyone. And if you're, you know, study Adam Smith or Milton Friedman, economists, they look at motivation as one of the biggest factors to an economy doing well, to a business doing well, and to an individual doing well. Um, and I'm a firm believer that you should work hard you should um, work with all your might. And if you do that, you should be rewarded. And unfortunately, that is being penalized in today's economy. And so what's going to happen and what is exciting because it already is happening is you're starting to see this parallel economy start to bubble up around the US right now. You see companies like Public Square or Red Balloon or others where they're providing alternatives. But what's exciting is if you understand economic theory and how the world works, how God built the world, the on providing value for their customers and for uh, their fellow employees, those are the people who are going to succeed. And so um, there's going to be this almost Ayn Randian moment where you have a lot of employers who are just going to start to struggle because they're going to lose their good employers because redballoon.work is going to help them find a new job. And they're going to struggle to actually get the job done because, and you see this with Silicon Valley Bank, great example. They did microaggression training almost weekly. And I hear this from former Silicon Valley uh, Bank people. And when you focus on something other than doing your job, when you focus on your microaggression, your aggression training or your CRT training or your DEI training, rather than, you know, business, of course that business is going to start to fail. And the people that I talked to who used to be there said they saw a lot of the credit risk coming, but they were basically told that if you, uh, or they believed that if they went and talked to somebody in the credit department about these risks, it would be considered a microaggression. And so they simply didn't have that conversation. So you can't actually innovate if you can't have a conversation um, and have to worry about people being offended constantly. And that was kind of that ad that we put together in the beginning is we need to be in a world where people don't take offense constantly if you know, your steps from the park and that's going to offend some small category of people. Uh, people need to get over themselves a little bit. Totally agree. And as I told you before the show, I think that the red balloon ad is one of the best ads that I've ever seen or heard in my entire life. So kudos to you. Actually, I'm curious, how did you come up with that idea? Yeah, great question. So um, it actually is another gentleman who also has his own cancel culture story. Uh, Brett Craig was the chief creative officer at Deutsche LA, which is one of the biggest ad agencies on the West Coast. And he helped with things like Fansville and Little Sweet. And I'm Ronald McDonald and I eat at Taco Bell. So he created all of these Super Bowl level ads uh, that were generally very high budget. And he was basically removed from his Christian male. Um, he was all the wrong categories. And so he went off and went and uh, did some work with Daily Wire, and now he started his own studio. And so uh, Brett and I ran at each other. We were kind of brainstorming. And what we wanted to accomplish was this, is many conservatives uh, will just keep their head down and focus on the job that they have. And they'll kind of ignore the pain of going through the DEI training. I'd say that most conservatives have a higher pain tolerance than most. We can walk with a rock in our shoe for a very long time at work. But uh, when you ask them about, hey, do you want that world for your kids? 
that's when all of a sudden Mama Bear comes out and you start to get a reaction from people. Uh, one of the customers at, at Red Balloon is Gavin DeBeer. Um, uh, that if you have a woman in an abusive relationship, she'll always make excuses for the person who is wrong in that situation, um, the guy, uh, because she's like, well, he has good days and bad days and all those things. But then if you ask, hey, would you like that for your daughter, for your child, uh, then she will fight uh, to the death to avoid that kind of thing. And so what we were trying to accomplish with this ad is kind of present this uto- this uh, this 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 horrible world in which our kids are actually looking forward to what most of us are just trying to put up with right now in the workplace. Um, It's actually a bit of a parody on a monster.com ad that was made. um, And the goal was really to wake conservatives up and say, look, I realize that you're being brave and strong and powering through your DEI training and just trying to keep your head down. But if you don't stand up and push back today, you're building a world where your kids are actually just gonna assume that that's normal and it's not normal. And so that's what we were trying to accomplish. And Brett is a uh, world-class ad person. Um, He's just amazing. Um, And I'd recommend if you're uh, a company out there looking for this caliber of ad, uh, big studios and big agency, is a great place to start. Uh, They were wonderful to work with, but obviously Red Balloon's trying to push for a world in which our kids don't think that it's normal to get offended all the time. It's normal where people can be free because um, it's it's amazing. When I get uh, thank you notes at redballoon.org from people, there was a lady in Dallas who wrote me and said, I just wanted you to know that you saved my marriage because my husband has been in a woke work environment for 10 years, they hate his worldview, and he can't help but bring that stuff home. When he found a new job through redballoon.org, our marriage is in better shape, our kids are plugged in, and we're now in a spot where we're actually going to church more often and we're happier, we're joyful. He's still working really hard, but we're joyful in the work that we have to do. And so uh, we think that it's really important to focus on freedom in the workplace because it actually will allow people to be free in other aspects of their life. I, I totally believe you or believe the person who wrote to you that their marriage was improved because as you just said, this ideology is cancerous and it's, it, it spreads. There, there's no way that, that it can just be confined to the workplace. People get demoralized, they get angry, they get sad, they get down on their lives. Of course, they're going to bring that home. I think that you have started this company at, at such a good time because more people, even I have seen, and I hope that this is just be, this is beyond my own anecdotal observation. I hope that this is in in uh, kind of spreading to the United States writ large. But I even see some of my friends who would call themselves quote unquote liberal. For instance, my friend who's applying to to get a real estate license, and they're even seeing that this stuff is just unbearable. Uh, and you know, as as uh, sad as it is it needs to affect people really personally in order for them to realize how absurd all of this is and make a change. So I, I just, I commend you hugely and, and what a great business mind you have because you, you've come in just at the right time, as I said. So how many placements have you made approximately so far in these past two years? Yeah, uh, we know that we have placed many thousands of people. Um, we know that there's been over 3000 businesses signed up. Um, we've had over a million uh, job seekers on the site looking for freedom. Um, unfortunately, we don't always know if uh, they'll hopefully hire the person um, and that will solve the problem for them. But this is a problem that is uh, a big problem across America today. Um, I mean, 20 percent of hiring managers in a recent poll by ResumeBuilder.com said that they were told to not hire white people. Uh, 91% of Americans have gone through some form of DEI training and only 67% have gone through on the job training, you know, something that would make them really good at their job. Uh, Gallup is saying that only 31% of people are actually plugged in at work and enjoying their work, engaged at work. So we have a significant disruption that's happening um, in the labor market right now. And part of the reason about 100% a quarter right now, which is not relaxing, but is super fun. Um, 100% a quarter is because um, we have found a market niche that happens to be half the country and that all the major job boards, the Indeed and ZipRecruiter, they're going to be afraid to touch 
right? And so, um, and this would be my encouragement to other patriots and conservatives and people who are just thinking, we'll call them classic liberals out there that are thinking about what's going on in the world. Um, you think that it's a big risk to walk away from what you're doing right now or your six figure job, but I would say this is a huge market opportunity uh, because um, it can't last forever. This woke ideology is going to implode on itself. It's going to devour itself. And if you are one of the first people say, you know what, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to move my family. I'm going to look for a new job. I'm going to hire the type of people that align with my worldview. Then you are going to be on the, on the front uh, edge of what's happening in the country right now. And doing that is always a good business move. So, um, We've been able to place many thousands of people. We're adding new businesses every day. We're adding thousands of job seekers every week. Um, it is wild and it's super fun because if you are a business right now today in America, it's terrifying to hire, right? Because you have the ditch on one side that if you ask the wrong questions, then you might um, get yourself a lawsuit. We're in a very litigious society. And if you ask the right if you don't ask those questions, you might get yourself a really bad hire who's a cultural disaster for your company. We call it uh, strapping cultural C4 to their chest as they walk into your company. We don't want that. And so as a company, there's these significant ditches on both high sides of the hiring road. And so what redballoon.work is, is not only can we post your jobs, but if you want, we can actually screen resumes. And we do that for people like Children's Health Defense, louder with Crowder, but we also can do a first cultural interview to make sure that the person that you're talking to, the person that you're hiring is actually going to help grow your business, build your culture, and not be a woke tard who's going to cause significant disruption to your business. So um, we've helped a lot. What are the types of businesses overwhelmingly that are posting these job opportunities? I can't imagine that they are the big woke companies that, that we see in the news. So, so what type of businesses are they? Yeah, no, it's, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, we do not have Amazon and Facebook. They will probably never post jobs with us because um, we actually filter every employer that comes through. Um, they uh, they will sign up and then they actually have to get approved by the Red Balloon team that they're not going to be woke because wow. we want our job seekers to know with confidence that if they are coming to redballoon.work, they are looking at jobs at companies that will actually respect their freedom. That is excellent. And it's a lot of smaller businesses. So sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just taken with, with the fact that you, you screen the businesses. That's really smart. We, yeah, no, we screen all the businesses um, because we want, again, as uh, my friend over at Public Square said, we, we want job seekers with the blood, to have the blessed assurance that they are now applying for a company that will respect their freedom and help them build their family legacy, right? And so um, all the businesses that are coming in are being screened. Uh, we have a great team that does that. Uh, we do this hiring process. so. Um, the businesses are generally on the smaller side, so we'll call it under 500 employees are, is the average for the Red Balloon businesses. Business that pays well, uh, respects your freedom, and has the um, you know alignment and worldview, and is a smaller business that actually respects you and values you as an employee, then Red Balloon.Work is a great place to go because those are the type of businesses we have. We have technology job, we have construction jobs. We don't focus on one industry or one geography, we focus on freedom. And if we have um, this group of employers and we're adding more every day that want to hire and they want employees who are not gonna be a whiner in the HR department, but they're gonna be freedom focused, hardworking meritocracy based employees, um, then it is a great place to spend, send your friend and, but the, the employers are all over the map. So as I was doing my homework on you, I couldn't find where you went to college. At least you didn't put it on your website. Did you go to college? I did not. So I grew up in San Francisco Bay Area. I did the dot-com thing. I did not um, even finish high school, to be honest, because if you're a computer programmer in the Bay Area and you're pretty good at it, um, there are a uh, few motivations to go, to go off to college. And as my friends were finishing high school and trying to figure out how they were going to pay for college, I was driving my convertible Mustang, asking some serious questions about why I would want to go do that. So um, I uh, graduated from the School of Harvard. 
is basically Dr. Crappy Shits, but I paid for her degree, so I feel like that counts for something. <laughs> Do you think that we are near the day where employers will not care whether their applicant got a college degree or even might even penalize them from having a degree from a certain university? I think that we are um, actually in that day right now. A lot of the employers that I'm talking to are removing that requirement from the job posting. They're looking for opportunities to hire someone who's a, a little bit more of a free thinker. Now, if you're building a bridge and you need an engineer or if you have an accounting firm, you probably need someone with training. Those psychology degrees, those undergrad in psychology um, or um, a lot of the language or history, a lot of employers are saying, you know, that's great that you did that, but I wish you were actually working and we care more about what you can do for me rather than the piece of paper that you have. Um, and my oldest son just went to New St. Andrews College here in Moscow, Idaho, um, liberal arts college, Christian college, fantastic. Um, and he's getting more of a, a Christian worldview from that education. He's not doing it for his career. He's doing it because he wants to be a better person. So I'm not saying you shouldn't go to college, but increasingly it's going to have less and less impact on your employability um, if you went to college, depending on the type of degree you get. What qualities do you look for in individuals who you will hire to work at Red Balloon? Yeah, I, I look for people who are willing to work hard. We actually say we're looking for people who are joyful, uh, courageous, and do and are excellent because uh, we are in a battle right now. We're in a cultural war, and if anyone thinks that we're not, they're not paying attention. Uh, we're in a cultural war, so I need employees who are courageous, who know that they are focused on um, impacting culture. We want Red Balloon. I've sold a lot of businesses. I've done a, bun a bunch of business exits over the years. I would like Red Balloon to grow to a large, meaningful business that I don't sell, but will has a deep impact on culture. And so I need courageous people for that. Um, joyful in this woke workplace and we want to redeem the world of work um, and so that's a huge problem and so we need to take the problem seriously but not ourselves seriously um, and so we have a lot of fun here at redballoon.work <laughs> and we need employees who are joyful and understand that and then excellent i think that there's a lot of people in this parallel or alternative economy who are relying on the fact that they are either a christian or a conservative and hoping that that will be enough to have their business model survive but i think that we should while focusing on that um, continue to innovate. We should be the biggest innovators, the best innovators in the industry. And so I want us to be excellent and not just rely on the fact that we have, uh, and we do, we have the best database of who are going to work hard. But even beyond that, I want to be constantly innovating and pushing uh, to bless our customers and bring them a ton of value. So that's, those are the three things we look for, joyful, courageous, and excellent. Um, and as long as someone has those, I'm not as worried about a college degree. Well, you seem to be all of those three. And as I said earlier in the interview, it's demoralizing being this young and seeing merit not be rewarded. But it also gives me an incredible amount of hope to see people like you in the game trying to, to change things. And you're right, we are in the middle of a culture war. Thank you very much for all that you do for our country. Thank you for redballoon.work. As I've told you, I've sent a lot of people your way. I'll continue sending more your way. And as a reminder to the audience, please check out and spread the word about redballoon.work. Thank you, Mr. Krabuschitz, for coming onto the program. Thank you, Julie. I really appreciate it. And thanks for uh, yeah, spreading the word. It's really important because this is important for America and for our kids. Well, I have a feeling you may be seeing my friend looking for some new real estate companies <laughs> on your site. <laughs> Thanks again. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining me today. A reminder to hit the subscribe button down below and how nice we are starting to see that Merit is winning. Let's keep it up, everyone. I'll see you on this program soon. Take care. <laughs>